So boyos, I had a shit ton of salt today. <clears throat> Blowing up, holy smokes, man. Wake up. Anyways, <sighs> real cool talk today. I think this is pretty cool, like I just said. <laughs> I'm gonna start this out with a story, and this coming from the book Subliminal. If you can see here, look at when the light hits it. It says, let's read this together. Hey, you, does it say you? It says like, hey you there. See the sexy? Hey there, sexy. Anyways, guys, quick story from this book, just to give you a an understanding of what I'm trying to get at, all right? The gaps in our memory. Jennifer Thompson was this girl in the 1980s, and she was laying in her bed, about to go to sleep, and this guy, sneaks up to her house and he cuts the light switch electricity off he bars the doors he breaks in he sneaks up to her bed and he jumps on her with a knife he says if you make a sound or cry for help i'm gonna cut your fucking throat he rapes her all right and as he's raping her she keeps her cool and she formulates a plan she gets up she says listen i'm gonna make you a drink baby he lets her and uh he, he's like, she's trying to make him comfortable, right? <laughs> she's trying to make him comfortable, right? And um, she ends up running off. And she goes next door. She knocks on the door. No one answers. Uh, she keeps running. She gets away. And he comes after her. He goes next door. He can't catch her. He goes next door. He rapes the other girl. All right, we're going to speed this up. So she gets away, right? She gets away. She goes to a sketch artist. She... Gets a sketch of the man's face. Now she's got it. She's told him all the details and stuff, what she can remember. She firmly tried to like remember his face, right? She's gonna get this motherfucker. Now, a few days later, the cops catch this 22 year old. He had been assaulted for sexual assault. He had, had been uh, convicted of sexual assault when he was in his young teen years. They put him in a trial and Jessica Thompson is there. There's like five other guys lined up, right? They want to make sure this is the guy. They line him up, five people, and Jessica Thompson says, it was him. That was the man who raped me. That was the man who raped me. He gets, we're going to call this guy Joe. Joe gets 10, I'm sorry, a life sentence plus like 50 years in prison. Meanwhile, Joe is in prison. And he comes across this guy that looks exactly like himself, right? Like an exact identity, twin. Uh, what do you call that? Gang girl, Doppler, something like that. Doppelganger. Joe thinks about confronting this guy and asking him, you know, did you rape someone recently? Did you tell me about your stories and whatnot? Anyways, he decides not to. And he catches word from another prison inmate that this other guy, we're gonna call him Chris, Sorry, all those Chris's out there. Chris. And Chris had bragged about raping a girl and named Jennifer and then going and raping another woman, right? Joe pleads his case. He somehow gets another trial, okay? In this trial, Joe and Chris are lined up. Jessica Thompson is in the corner and she's looking at the two. And again, with certainty, she points at Joe, he's the guy who raped me. Joe gets another life sentence, so two life sentences and another so-and-so years in prison. Forever he's stuck. 10 years pass by. This guy spends over 10 years in prison and finally pleads again. He talks to someone I forgot, but somehow they come across the semen sample, 10 years old. I didn't even know semen could be around that long. They find these semen samples and it actually confirms that Joe was innocent, that Chris is the actual man that had raped Jennifer Thompson. Mind blowing shit. That's really the story though, right there. She was so certain after she had put this man as her convicted rapist, in her, man, in her mind, this was the man that had raped me. She was certain. It could be no one else. And she chose the wrong guy. As an eyewitness, that happens a lot, actually. According to this book, it's like 75% of like people in jail now could be wrongly accused. Anyways, that's not what this talk is about. 
What this talk is about is to point out the gaps in our memory and to show us how we can change our lives when we start to become aware. So what I've been noticing is that I don't really remember all the finite, uh, the very like small details of my day. I used to think I had a great memory, but as I look back on the days, the weeks, the months, the years, you know, it gets hard to remember three meals a day, you know, what did I eat two days ago at this meal, or the drive to the gym, or the walk to school, or the work day even, right? It becomes repetitive. We remember a lot of big events, and we forget a lot of the small details. Now, what we do throughout our day is like being this unconscious kind of drifting mode. And you'll see this a lot of times at work, right? If you walk into work, someone's there, maybe yourself, you know me, there's a box of donuts. You know, I have a choice to make, but there's like these stimulus coffee. There's these things, a new show on television. You know, I'm awakened. I have a stimulus. There's a stimuli now. I can stop just drifting and I can hold my focus somewhere for the moment being. There's something important here because as we're going throughout the day in this unconscious mode, I'm just going to call it drifting. We're not engaged. And you can tell when you're engaged because it takes some conscious effort. When you're learning, you're engaged. When I open up this book and there is words in front of me, my mind is making, I'm, I'm having a conversation with myself. I'm engaged when I'm learning a new skill or when I'm doing something, when I'm working out. And maybe this has come from my habit of working out. Have you ever went a couple of days, weeks without going to the gym? Then what happens is you start to feel depressed, like you're missing out on something, like your body's deteriorating. And the same goes for my mind. I, f I have a very hard time just going with the flow. And a lot of people will tell me it's okay, you know, just go with the flow, man. But I have such a hard time, even like on days where you're just hanging out, just relaxing. It's like I'm missing a day at the gym, I'm not engaged, and my brain needs to be engaged. But I can say that as much as I want, but as I look at the days that pass by, a lot of it has been me drifting down this little river of life. It's so easy, I've been unconscious just kind of going through the day. These little buzzes that perk me up. I feel like I'm doing something, but really, I'm still drifting, I'm still drifting. But when you become aware, guys, when you understand what it is that your brain needs, you can snap out of it. Now you can use some conscious thought. So yeah, we're gonna end it here. You can use conscious thought and you can begin to see when you're drifting and change that by engaging yourself with something new. You can use your time. I'll support that's powerful. You can begin to use your time better because it's too easy to drift.